Hello and welcome to this INAV quick tip. This quick tip has been done because I've had the same question a couple of times within 24 hours, which means it's obviously something that a lot of you are thinking about. And that's specifically to do with INAV and fixed wing models. And that's the fact that when you're playing with them on the bench, when you move the controls when INAV is in manual mode, you get far more control surface movement than you do if it's in something like angle, horizon, or even acro. Is that normal? Is that what it's supposed to be like? Well, the answer is yes, absolutely. Now, I have covered this in things like the I'm Now for Beginners series and talked about it in other places as well. But I'm making this updated video because if I'm getting asked the questions, people aren't finding that content. I'm going to put links down below, though, to things like the I'm Now for Beginners series, the last one that I did. So go and check that out if you are building this stuff and you're not sure about some of these things. There's lots of little gotchas and questions that are going to come into your head as you're doing your first builds with iNav. This is a great example. So let's first of all talk about why this happens. Well, in manual mode, the flight controller is kind of doing what it says in the tin. It's passing the control from your radio directly to the control surface. And the only thing it's really doing is adding the expo that you've added in iNav and also doing the mixing for you. And that means that when you move the stick on the radio to full deflection, it's going to send the full value to the servo in whichever direction you're moving it. So that's why you get that movement. However, when you go into something like Angle Horizon or even Acro, the control surface is not being controlled by you. Although you have an element of input, the control surface is actually being controlled by the flight controller. This time, it's not only doing things like adding the expo and doing the mixing, there's this thing called a PIF loop, or PIF D loop. And what those things are, proportional, integral, and feed forward. So there's multiple things controlling the control surface. And sat on the bench, with no movement at all, only one of those three things is actually affecting the control surface, and that is the input from your sticks. So consequently, you only see the movement that relates to that part of the PIF loop. If that didn't make any sense, let me try to explain it more simply. iNav is expecting when you put it in something like angle horizon or acro mode to stabilize the plane for you. So it's going to keep a little bit of movement back from those control surfaces. So if the model tilts, then it can use those control surfaces to bring the model back into the attitude that you've asked for with the radio. And that bit of reserved movement is why it's less when it's in something like angle horizon or acro than it is in manual. And you can see this when it's on the bench. If you have it in angle mode and you go to full deflection and the control surfaces move, if you pick the wing or plane up and then rock it, you'll see that the control surfaces will move even more and that's those extra bits of reserved movement that iNav is using. So how do you use manual mode? What's it for? Well, manual mode is one that I fly in a lot. It means that I now, as a flight control system, kind of gets out of the way. If it's a windy day, I might not use manual mode, but on a calm, beautiful day, I'll stick it into manual mode and fly around and have a wonderful time. However, on the bench, manual mode is perfect to do things like setting up the amount of travel on your control surface. So what I would do is make sure that one of the modes is manual, make sure the prop is off, obviously for safety. I would then move the stick on the radio to get maximum deflection and measure that deflection with a ruler and check it against what the manufacturer's specifications say. 12, 15 millimeters or less is typical for large control surfaces. If it's too much, then what I will do is use the linkages to change that. Again, I'll put a link down below to my video that explains how to use linkages to increase and decrease the amount of movement from a control surface. I do that first, and then only then, if I can't get it exactly where I want it to be with the control surface linkage movement that I have available on that aircraft, then I will go into iNav and kind of play with the rates just to dial it in perfectly. Once that is done in manual, then that is the maximum movement that's available to iNav to control the plane. So when iNav is in angle or horizon, it will have that same control authority that you would have if you flew it in manual. It's a really important part of the setup to make sure that you do that setup for the control surfaces so that the maximum deflection is the maximum deflection that the plane needs. Doing that in manual then means that also when you try and fly in acro and other things and then you flick into manual mode, the feel 
and the rates and the amount of acrobatics that you can do are going to be the same as well. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.